Yeah, so that is, it's Pastor Tom's oldest brother. Um, and if you know him, you love him, and he loves you. Um, he has Down syndrome and um, wasn't supposed to make it past 20, and here he is at 65. And, um, and, and God can use anybody. Um, and I can just testify to, to how um, it, Steve just knows you and he loves you. And, and if you see him in public, he'll probably give you a hug. And, um, but uh, he has, um, he hears the heart of God and he hears God and he talks to God. And um, he has prophetically ministered to me. Um, I was going through something and he came alongside me and gave me a word from God that he shouldn't have known. And um, it's amazing. And so if God can use a Down syndrome 65-year-old man who wasn't supposed to live past 20, he can use you and I, right? Yes, he can use us. So anyway, happy birthday, Stevie. He's probably watching us on Facebook right now with my grandma, Pat. A um, few announcements. We have weekly prayer here at the church Tuesdays, 7 o'clock. Would love for you to join us. Any week you can, Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. Our youth group just concluded last week, and so just a big thank you to everybody who prayed into that, volunteered their time, gave a meal. Um, we'll kick that back up after summer, so we have camps and all of that's coming up. If you would like to support a, a kiddo, um, junior high, high school, whatever it is, if you would like to sponsor them or help pay their tuition to go to camp this summer, um, you can put that on an envelope and mark it, or you can talk to Pastor Tom and Teresa um, to do that as well. And then um, Thursday morning, our men's group is meeting. They have breakfast at 7 a.m., and they are recruiting new eaters. Eaters. And so if you haven't been coming and you like to eat or you like breakfast, um, they would love for you to come 7 a.m. Thursday mornings, um, and you are welcome to do that. Um, I just wanted to share something briefly. I didn't get a chance to talk to Doug right before church, but he had shared something this last week, um, just kind of resonated with me. He was talking to somebody, and he had asked them um, how their conversation was with God that morning. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but how was your conversation with God? How was your visit with God this morning? And in that, it was because if you have a relationship with somebody, you, you, you talk to them, right? You visit with them. You get up in the morning and you talk to them. It would be super rude if you got up and you didn't talk to your spouse all morning. Silent treatment, right? I'm not going to say good morning. I'm not going to say anything. They would think that something was wrong, right? Um, and so it's kind of rude if God is in the room with you, which he is. Um, he's sitting right there with you. He's always with you. And you not to say anything to him, Right? He's talking, you're not talking back. That's rude. So, <laughs> so this morning, if you didn't talk to God, I just want you to think of that. Just something to ponder, um, that we have this relationship with God. It's a cool relationship. It's, it's fun. He's there. He wants to help us. He wants that. He delights in us. And so, throughout the day today, tomorrow morning, Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, God. I just, I'm so glad that I'm alive. I'm awake. Robert prayed that this morning. I woke up this morning. I could hear the birds singing. I got out of bed. I could see the sun shining. Like, there's so much to be thankful for. So we can talk to him. We can thank him. We can ask him for things, whatever it is, but just to have that dialogue because we're in relationship with him. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Children's Church, if you're three years old through fifth grade, you can go downstairs. Pastor Tom will come. Takes me a while to get dressed here, right? <laughs> what you doing? I'm just putting my makeup on. Anyway, <laughs> praise the Lord. So good to see you all. Amen? Amen. It's a new day. Ah, oh, I love new days. Summer is so fun. Oh, my goodness. It's, uh, it's the question is, how early do you get up and how late do you stay up? 
I love that, right? I love that decision. So in the wintertime, I can be in bed at 7 o'clock because it's dark out. But um, can I get a little bit more volume, please? Uh, make sure we're... Uh, people in the Facebook land can hear us out there. I don't know if you want to do a test on that. But if I could get a little bit more volume on myself, that'd be awesome. Amen? I was yelling at cows yesterday, so uh, in a good way. Uh, <laughs> When I, was, uh, when I was younger and my wife was uh, my helpmate, uh, we used to work cows together, and uh, man, I had a bad temper. Uh, I know it's hard to believe, but I did have a bad temper. I could, my fuse was about this short, and, it, uh, and not, not the fault of the, the animal, but man, I just would get, it just wasn't going my way, right? And so... <clears throat> After a couple of times, I'd yell at my wife, yes, and shut the gate, close the gate, open the gate. She walked, started walking to the house. And you're going, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to sort cows and open the gate at the same time. So you have to make this apology and say you'll never do it again and whatever. So, But we learned. Um, I love working cows now, and uh, I'm, I'm a lot more patient, and there's no sense getting worked up. It's a long day. Um, there's more of them than you, so you just, well, go with the flow, amen? So it's all fun. Uh, let's pray. God, I thank you today. Uh, there's life in you. Lord, I thank you that even as you uh, spoke in this song, you're working even when I don't see you're working. And Lord, when we went to sleep last night, we closed our eyes, and maybe we were uh, subconsciously aware, but Lord God, we were sleeping and while we were sleeping, you were awake. You never sleep, nor, nor, you, nor do you slumber. And Lord, I believe, Father Lord, that your hand is moving at all times. The Spirit of the Lord is moving at all times, Lord, working on situations, moving on people's hearts. Even as we pray, the, righteous, the prayers of a, <clears throat> of a righteous man availeth much. And I believe, Father Lord, with that, that with all my heart, that as we pray, the hand of God is being moved. And Lord, in a good way, Lord, we're not making you, but you're honoring your word. You're honoring our prayers, Lord Jesus, as we pray according to your will, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for your greatness and your goodness, Lord. I thank you that um, even as we spoke about our new mercies every morning, every morning as I wake up, there's new mercies, new opportunities. And Lord, even though, though I may have missed opportunities yesterday's, I have opportunities today to let your glory shine, to be able to make you famous, Lord God, to be able to proclaim the goodness of God. And Lord, I, I declare today that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. And Lord, you sit high in the heavenlies, Lord, and you also sit in our heart, Lord God. You are on the throne room of our heart, Lord Jesus, living in us and abiding with us, Lord. And so I thank you, Lord, for the promises that are true in, in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You, every time I, uh, the Lord kind of gives me a, a, a sermon or a scripture, um, it's sometimes hard to find out uh, what is the, going to be the title of that scripture. And uh, you try to make it uh, like positive, you try to make it, um, you know, catchy or whatever. Today's not going to be catchy, it's just saying difficult times. How many know that we're in difficult times? How many experience in difficult times? It's the truth, okay? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read 2 Thessalonians verse number, or chapter 2, verse number 3. It's not on our thing, so the Lord just kind of dropped this in. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first, the falling away from the Lord. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Now, the enemy doesn't know when Christ is coming back, when the trumpet comes, is blasted, and Jesus comes to get his saints. He doesn't know that. But he's unleashing this day. He knows time is short, and he's out there 
causing difficult times for you and I. And I want to talk a little bit about that, how you and I can be prepared, how you and I can discern the times and not be afraid and not be overwhelmed by the difficult times. Amen. So let's go to 2 Timothy. We'll kind of stay close to there today as best we can. Second Timothy 3, verse 1. But realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. Realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. Well, you say, well, I'm protected by the Lord. I'm under the... Yes, you are. And, you know, when you read Scripture... Sometimes there, there's lots of meanings to the same word. When we look about, look at the word world, okay, um, I've narrowed it down, I guess, to three different parts. And when we look at the world, we are people, born-again Christians, we're, we're, uh, we're in this world, okay? When you, when you say it that way, you are, as a people, the sum of the whole, so in other words, you're in this world, you're part of the people of this world as a whole, and you're affected by the decisions that other people make, okay? Try not to get super spiritual here on me, because when our levy gets passed or doesn't get passed, if taxes go up, tell me it doesn't affect you. It affects you, okay? So when you live in this world you're going to be affected by the decisions of others. And when you begin to proclaim, when you begin to try to advance the kingdom of God, guess who's coming against you? Who's po opposing you? The spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of this world. He's going to try to resist you, and he does resist you. And he resists you through other people. Okay? So you're going to have some difficult times if you're trying to advance the kingdom of God. If you're trying to live according to the word of God, if you're trying to live according to the truth of his word, you're going to have faced some difficult times. I'll answer that phone. <laughs> uh, so, so we have this, right? So we the people are in the world, some of the whole. Number two, we are not subject are under the control of the spirit of this world. Satan is God of this world, okay? When Adam sinned, he released all authority to Satan, in a sense, okay? Jesus comes, he dies, he, he rises again, he, he defeats sin and death, right? And now he has given through Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, he has given you and I the ability, right, to have authority here on this earth. Even, it's, even though it's the domain of Satan. Okay? But we're not subject to that spirit. Okay? Third, this world, the natural, tangible stuff. That's when we say, this world is not my home. So let's not get too attached to it. We steward things, right? We, we, we go out, we make an income, we, we, we love to plant trees, we love, but this is all going to be gone someday. So that's why it says, store up for yourself treasures in heaven, because this stuff is going to go away. Now, do I do things? Here, to store up treasures, absolutely. I invest in people's lives. I do things that will advance the kingdom of God. Them are treasures in heaven, okay? The enemy can't touch it. So, so we, as, as it says, difficult times will come, we're going to experience those difficult times. Whenever we start... When the world, 
and, and I, I could say that I've done this too, when I go against the law of God, when I go against the spiritual laws of God, the natural law is affected. You're going to be affected naturally. If you have a nation, right, or a people that are contrary to the word of God or living contrary to the word of God, you will be affected in the natural. That's the difficult times. When you start going out and proclaiming what is contrary to the world, you're going to receive some difficult times. It's going to be difficult. Not impossible. It's going to be difficult. So with the leading of the Holy Spirit, right, we go out and we begin to take the land. We begin to minister. We begin to speak life. We begin to tell the truth in the arena that God has put us in. How many know you're in an arena? How many know you're in a war? How many know the enemy is not just staying in his corner? He's coming at you, right? But we are taking ground. We're taking ground. John 16, 13 says, But he, the spirit of truth, comes. He will guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit is leading you by way of Jesus to the Father. And we talked about this, the old, uh, the old tabernacle, the old temple, right? There was a, a certain way that Aaron had to do things. And when he was all done with his process, he ended up in the holiest of holies, right? And since Jesus has ripped the veil, the veil is a representation of sin that, that, that has opened up, and it, you and I as Christians can step into the throne room of grace, into the holy place, because of the blood of Jesus. And, and, and so you are led there by the Holy Spirit. We're led into that holy place by the, by the Spirit. So that's why it says um, God is a spirit, and therefore we must worship him in spirit and in truth. You cannot intellectually get to the throne room of grace. Amen. It's not a mind thing. It's not a transferring of your whatever to get there. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's, it's in him, a place in Christ Jesus, a place in our Father. So, so when we begin to proclaim the good news, there's going to be some difficult times that come at us because the enemy wants to shut your mouth. He wants to keep you quiet. He doesn't want you to testify of the good things. He doesn't want to live, have you live a life of victory. Amen? Amen. It's true, okay? So, as, so as, we, as we begin to live our life for Christ, we're naturally, because of the things spiritually, we're going to, we're going to feel that resistance. So what we have to do is we have to walk in a place of the Spirit. Now, I don't, I'm not so much of a thinker, I guess. I mean, I think, but it's like um, Amber was saying the other day, you know, when you, when you start, um, I was out branding and riding a four-wheeler, and literally I can just like shut the switch off and just look at the scenery and be good with it. I don't have to super analyze anything. I don't have, to, you know what I'm saying? And so, but many times our intellect, our soulish man, argues against the things of God. I can look at, and, and I, I've told this story many times, is that um, I was out fencing once, and, and I pull over this hill, and this whole valley is just full of flowers, beautiful flowers. No one's going to see it but the cows, okay? <laughs> but God created it for me. He created that whole valley for me to see. That's awesome and amazing to me. So, so what happens to me is when I'm, I'm doing my thing, you can, you can do your thing and still think on the things of God. I love that part. I love the ability to think on the things above. Think of heavenly things. Think of how this pertains to heaven. It's amazing. So when, when we start talking about the soulish man, 
the soulish man disagrees a lot of the time with God. It's in conflict. doesn't make sense. But the spirit man understands, but the soulish man sometimes doesn't understand until it is submitted to the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit and the Word. We don't have to get Holy Spirit conscious so much in the fact that, man, it's all you talk about is the Holy Spirit. Well, guess what? <laughs> He's here. He's leading me. Jesus says, I'm going to go so that I can send a comforter. I can send you a guide. I can send you the spirit of truth, right? He will lead you into all truth. He's just leading you to Jesus. He's leading you to the Father. Almost, almost always we talk about Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They, they're working together, cooperating together amazingly. I wish we could get that all figured out, right? <laughs> They're working together. They're working together. So when we start talking about the world, and we start talking about the spirit world, we're downstairs we've been talking about discerning spirits. Okay? In fact, one of the scriptures says, test the spirits. So in other words, there's more than one spirit out here, right? <laughs> And so you, you and I need to determine, is this the spirit of God? Is this the spirit of the world, the world or the Antichrist, whatever it may be, contrary to the word of God? That's how we know he's of this world. And we, we need to determine that. You and I need to have that ability to discern. Is this God or is this Satan? And we had this discussion downstairs, or is it me? Sometimes... We, Poor devil gets blamed, and we're doing the we're doing all the work, right? He just puts it. But God wants us to know Him. God wants us to discern the discerning of the spirits. If we're walking in our soulish man, I'm sorry if you were downstairs. We we're going to talk a little bit about the same thing. But in your soulish man, many times we're looking for an answer. The, the, the answer for you, for I know the plans that I have for you, the answer that, that God has for you lies in Him. It's in Him. The thoughts of God are revealed to you by the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of God. So if, if God has a plan for me, we, we have to go His direction. We don't go ask every Tom, Dick, and Harry, what do you think I should do here? We ask the Holy Spirit, what do I do here? It should line up with the word. Holy Spirit is only going to speak, what? What he's heard. It's important. Let's go to 1 Timothy 4.1. Difficult times. <sighs> Help, Lord. But the Spirit specifically or explicitly says that in latter times some will fall away from the faith. They will be paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons by means of hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with branding irons. So in other words... There's a point when you, in life, you resist God, you resist his word so much that there's a searing that happens. There's no connection. That's what searing means. And in your mind, you're going, well, what about the prodigal son? Right? And there's always, I, I, you, you think of the, the workers in the field, the 11th hour they came, 
at the last minute they came. But it also says that there's a time. Pharaoh had lots of opportunities to let God's people go. But what did he do? He kept hardening his heart towards God. Moses was God's representative. Moses was God's voice per se. And Pharaoh continued to harden his heart towards God's word. And there came a point, right? There came a point where there was no return. What about the grace of God? Yeah, the grace of God is amazing. It's amazing. It reaches down so far, we couldn't even imagine it. His love extends so far, it's amazing. We can't even fathom it, the love that God has for us. Even when we say Jesus gave, or God gave his son, we, we, we don't even fathom that love. We don't. So when it says some will fall away from the faith, it means that very thing. They will fail to believe in Jesus Christ. They will fail to believe in the word of God. Does it happen overnight? Probably not. But eventually they come to a point where they've resisted the truth so long that there is a searing of their minds. There's no coming back. And it ought to bring a reverence for the word of God. It ought to bring a reverence to him who sits on the throne. That there is a point in time where you won't be able to make that decision to come back to him. We don't like this, okay? Because we want to live like we want to live. We want to live in sensuality. We want to live according to our ways. We want to live according to man's ways. We want to live according to the word world, not according to what God has me, right? And then, we, and then we get mad at God when things happen. See, difficult times aren't because you're not disciplined. Many times you're not, I don't know if I said that right, Many times, difficult times come because you're not disciplined in the things of God. You're going out and you're doing whatever you want, and difficult times are coming your way. I don't believe that's what he's talking about in this sense. You are sowing into your own life. What you sow, you're going to reap. Okay? And thank God for the grace of God. Right? <laughs> Even this morning when you woke up, the grace of God was there for you. Because you got another breath. You got another opportunity to serve the King of Kings. You got another opportunity to wake up and glorify the King of Kings. You got another opportunity to experience the goodness of God through the birds, through the trees, through the green grass. To give you an opportunity to be grateful to king, the king of kings, the one who gave you breath, the one who gave you life. He's the one that we want to serve. He's the one that we want to represent. He's the one that we want to live for. I love that word, live for him. Live. Do you know what live means? I don't know. What does it mean to you? Really, honestly, do, what does live mean? Does it mean going to job? Wait and get up tomorrow morning and go back to your job? I don't think so. I mean, that might be part of it. But man, man, if my focus is just on my job, oof da. Ay, ay, ay. Right? Man, live life to the fullest in Him. For He's the one that gives us life. How many love life? You might be in a terrible time right now. But that is not the distinguishing point of your life. Jesus is. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King of Kings. My, my focus is not in my situation. My focus is not on what people are saying. My, fo my focus is not on what I see with my natural eye. Speak, right? 
Speak, therefore. Pray. Resist the things of the enemy. He wants to raise havoc in your life. If he's raising havoc in your life, it's probably you're doing, probably doing the right thing. Stop. Maybe. I mean, you're, I don't know. That's between you and the Holy Spirit. He's leading you. If you're doing something contrary to the Holy Spirit, what's he saying? Did he just leave you go? No, he's telling you. And you have a decision to make. Am I going to follow this or am I going to hear the Holy Spirit? Follow this, I'm grieving him. Follow this, I'm going against his word, God's word. And how many times have we done that? And we reap the consequences of it. Okay? We, you and I need to have an understanding that in the last days, difficult times are going to come towards you. And, you know, sometimes we, 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 we planted our tomatoes. We bought the tomatoes one day, a couple weeks ago, planted a potato, or got our tomatoes, planted them in the, in the ground, and the very next night it freezes. That night it freezes. Difficult times are going to come. And you and I need to be ready for those difficult times. What does it mean? Build your house on the firm foundation. What does that mean? Be in the word. What does that mean? Understand the word. What does that mean? Be close to the Father. Don't be out doing your own thing. Doing what God has called us to do. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy 3, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For men, it might not be you, but it might be others, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. They're going to be boastful. They're going to be arrogant. They're going to be revilers. They're going to be disobedient to their parents. They're going to be ungrateful. They're going to be unholy. They're going to be unloving, uh, irreconcilable. Uh, Unwilling to repent, unwilling to repent for what they've done. Doesn't that sound like us? Doesn't that sound like the world? Now, we, we don't want to be condemned, but our eyes need to be opened to the things that God does not find favor in. If you're unwilling to repent, where does re repentance is turning away from the very thing that you just did? Now, remember, there's, there's mercies, new mercies every morning. God extends his mercy, but he's, there's an expectation for you to change. And, and we'll see that right here. Um, they're treacherous, they're reckless, they're conceited, they're lo lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They're more, they're more into what feels good to me. They're more into what the world says than what God says. I mean, we can, we can see the moral decline in this world, in America, in our families. The decisions that they're making are not according to the Word of God. And it's contrary and, and, and so we expect this blessing, we expect our life to be blessed in the midst of us, our, in, in the midst of our rebellion. Is God displeased with you? No. Is he mad at you? No. Is he wanting you to change? Absolutely. Because he's given you the opportunity. I, I, I'm, I'm working on, there's that one sin that, that uh, is unforgivable. It's the blaspheme of the Holy Spirit. I'm working on that. I think we think, or I think we are looking at it narrow, narrowly minded. I think it's bigger than you think it is. Okay. So when we walk, it says this: holding, verse number five, three five. They're treacherous. They're reckless. Holding to a form of godliness, 
although they've denied its power and avoid such men as these. So in other words, they're walking around religiously, they're showing up in the temple, they're showing up in church, but nothing's changing. Here we are. I'm just human, right? It's just me. It's just the way God made me. Well, guess what? You've been born again. God has breathed into, him, into you the breath of God. His righteousness lives within us. And it's just not a matter of you working to get better, but it's uh, the idea and the truth that the, the, the God of righteousness, Jesus Christ, lives within me. And out of here, I live for him. I live righteously for him because I want to please my father because I'm in love with him. See, many, many times we try to be obedient without love. If you love somebody... Aren't you going to follow his commands? Aren't you going to follow and care about what they say? Absolutely you are. We're so into this obedient thing, it becomes a work. Well, I wasn't obedient. No. Are you really in love with God? And I'm not questioning your love, but how deep is your love? God cares about your future. God cares about you as an individual. But man, there's some things that we need to get squared around in our thinking and in our heart that line up with his word. So, so they're, they're holding to a place of godliness, right? Godliness meaning um, talking about the things of God, talking about the virtues of God, but denying the power to change. So where does the power to change come from? It's not only by the Holy Spirit, but it's by the blood of Jesus. So if we deny the Holy Spirit or leave him off to the side, and we really don't want to talk about the blood of Jesus so much, and the power that comes with the blood of Jesus, guess what? You have a form of godliness. Because I believe this, God changes us. The power of the blood of Jesus changes things. It changes things. We, back in the old days... The power of the blood of Jesus. I mean, we sing it. Do you believe it? Do you live it? Have you experienced the power of the blood of Jesus? I know I have. I have experienced the fact that I was once under the curse of the law, but no more. I was once on my deathbed, but no more. Okay. It's the power of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will change your thinking. The blood of Jesus will change your life. There's power in it. Man, I don't know how many times back here on the street, man, I'm just ready to give my life to the Lord. I'm ready to surrender. Yeah, for the moment you are. And God works, and I understand all that. Man, but if you're not ready to jump in with both feet... He warns us of that. Once you've experienced and tasted the good things of God and go away, God wants us to indulge our life in Him, not in sin. Discerning of spirits. When we start talking about that, there's many deceiving spirits out there. In fact, um, I think the one part that we read, the, the, the spirit of demons, the spirit of religion, we've heard that hundreds of times. But the spirit of religion was operating in the time of Christ. Right? It, the spirit of religion acknowledges, but yet doesn't follow the things of God. Paul was the greatest example of that. Man, he was the letter of law guy. He knew everything about it, but failed to follow him. Jesus says, why are you, why are you resisting me? I think it says pricking the goads. I mean... Why are you resisting me trying to turn you in the right direction? Okay? 
But Paul had a revelation on the road to Damascus. And his life was changed. And he began to preach truth. He'll tell you all about the Pharisee stuff. He'll tell you all about hypocrisy because he lived it. The guy is, is talking about, Paul is talking about what he used to be. God changed his life. Jesus changed his life. God wants to change our life. We do not want to walk in a place of deception. We don't want to walk in a place of not receiving the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. Does Jesus redeem you halfway? No, he redeemed you all the way. He has brought you out of the miry clay and set you on a place. Okay? You're redeemed. And, and we believe it part way. Right? We believe it part way, and we be begin to believe the lies of the enemy. Paul reminds us, that is not what you were taught. You were taught this, and now you're back here again. And so what happens is, you and I begin to confer with or confide with other people that are maybe not believing the truth of the word. You're listening to people... Who are not speaking truth. That's where these people are coming from. Okay? They're out there. They may not be standing behind a podium, even though they are standing behind a podium. They're out there. So if you're looking for an answer, if you're just going to hang out with somebody, be careful. Be discerning. I'll go in a direction in just a minute. Almost every epistle, almost every one of them warns us of this, of individuals who are leading people of the faith astray. They're leading you and I, per se, falsely. They do not agree with the total gospel. Now, I might not have, I'm trying to think here. I might not have the full knowledge of something, okay? I'll, I'll use the Holy Spirit. Knowing this, that we grow every day, and we're learning every day, and, and God is revealing to each individual as they mature in Him. Okay, so we understand there's a maturing process. So as I began to teach on the Holy Spirit the last six months, I learned a lot. I learned more than I knew six months ago. Now, sometimes, innocently, we talk of the Holy Spirit wrongly. We teach on the Holy Spirit wrongly, okay, innocently, because we lack the knowledge of it. But when we, as an individual, speak against the Holy Spirit, we're on dangerous ground. And there are teachers that are teaching against Holy Spirit. They're teaching against the blood of Jesus. They're teaching against it. And so when you, as an individual, are going to host a Bible study, you best know what you're talking about, okay? You're not just going to come together, let's just go sit down together, and we're going to chat about the Bible. Well, that's awesome. What if they go the wrong direction? You better know something. I'm not trying to keep you from anything. If God wants to expand you in an area, go for it. But you best know, know what you're talking about. Because there are deceiving spirits out there that are going to try to take it a different direction. I'm telling you. You have a responsibility. Now, it's not overwhelmingly, because he teaches us all things. And you study to show yourself approved. Right? 
But you have a responsibility. We're not just going to go sit down at the coffee shop and let's discuss 2 Timothy. Now, we can do that in a sense, but you best know what you're talking about. You best know what you better believe. It's true. He, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. His name is Jesus. Okay? And sometimes we get out into these tangents that's like, oh my goodness, let's just bring it back to Jesus. Let's just bring it back to truth. Let's just bring it back to the life of Christ. Let's bring it back to our Father. Let's bring it back to the Holy Spirit. Is it just quiet in here or what? <laughs> so what happens is, when we begin to confide in others, there's a... Help me, Lord. So if I'm looking for an answer, and I really don't know Teresa per se and I go confide in her, there's a vacuum, okay? And she may speak something that's contrary to the word of God, and I'm going to go, I'll take that, okay? So you, as an individual, right, have to be studied, have to understand. And I'm not saying that we can't hang out with one another. I'm not saying that we can't, you know, but when you begin to confide in people, that don't believe the word of God, don't believe maybe necessarily what you believe. You best be careful. Because there are those spirits. Now, I'm not degrading the individual that you're hanging out with. Uh, he, may be your be he or she may be your best friend. But there is a spirit, right, of demons that is working through people. You got to be careful. You have to be aware. So you and I, <laughs> I love this part. We don't have to be nutcases, right? <laughs> we don't have to be nutty, right? We don't have to be a squirrel looking for the next nut or whatever. But really, we can grow in Christ. We can grow together in the things of Christ. We can grow together. Let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter 2. I'm getting really close to closing up. Second Peter 2. So, help me, Lord. As we were going from the very beginning... Uh, verse number uh, chapter 2 but false prophets also arose among the people uh, they were teaching hypocrisy they were uh, secretly introducing destructive heresies okay so when we begin to look at that John says this he who believes in me as the scripture said from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water Jesus is referring to the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to go to verse number 17. 2 Peter 2, 17. Holy Spirit is a picture of water. Springs of living water is a picture of Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, who are these false prophets? Who are these people? Right? Jesus describes them as this. In verse number 17, these are springs without water. And mists driven by a storm for whom the black darkness has been reserved. So in other words, there are people that are teaching without Holy Spirit. They're, they're, they're speaking out of intellect. They're speaking out of experience rather than the Holy Spirit. 
Jesus says this, and, I, and I'll read it again. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this, Jesus was speaking of the Spirit. And Jesus said, I will baptize, John said, I will, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So in other words, when we're teaching, we're teaching under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. There's, there's rivers of living water flowing out of us. These people here are teaching you something that is maybe not, is contrary to the Word of God. We could, we could use the word, um, not to step on anybody's toes, but there's things that greed. Let's use the word greed. Okay. We think, people sometimes teach, well, that's just your old nature. You'll never get better at that. That's a lie. Pornography. Well, God made man to look at that. Yeah. You better have some discrepancy. You better have some boundaries. Right? Right? You go to somebody and say, well, that's just natural for a man to do that. Absolutely not. You cannot commit adultery and say that's good. You cannot look at another woman and say that's good. Who lusts after a woman, even though he's looking at her, has not done anything, right? He said that's not right. Jesus said that. But we have people saying, well, that's just part of your nature. That's just okay. Someday you'll get over. No, no. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. There's freedom from that. Amen. Those people are keeping you in bondage. They're not preaching truth. Right. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Amen. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's truth. Right? Yeah. And, and we face things, right? We Jesus faced things, but he didn't indulge in them. Right. It's sad to say that we indulge in those things. And there's repentance. There's power to walk away from it. There's grace to walk away from it. But we give ourselves permission to stay in it. And others give us permission. And we like it. Because it feels good. My body likes it. My, my body likes uh, sensuality. But that's not what God has called us to. Be ye holy as I am holy. Be righteous. Practice righteousness. It says practice righteousness. We have a responsibility. It's not by works, by faith, right? Faith without works is dead. The minute you go into a mentality of law, I have to, and not rely on Jesus and the blood of Jesus or the Holy Spirit, you've moved into law. That's why we fail many times. Jesus will and has, will, Holy Spirit leads you, take his hand, leads you into the place of the holy place. Right? Well, I better get my act cleaned up before I get there. No, Jesus has already done that. The Father looks at you through the blood of Jesus. Right? Right? So I can come boldly to the, to the throne room of grace. Where was I here? <clears throat> so these springs are without water. They are midst. Here's the deal. Now we rejoice when it rained. Man, every farmer is like rejoicing. Okay? It's raining. It's rained. It's rained, okay? What about June? What about July? Is, is, a May, is the May rain going to take us through? Absolutely not. And the infilling of the Holy Spirit is necessary. It's not just a one-time deal. It's an infilling, the streams of living water. It's the springs of living water. The springs of living water are constantly being fed. That's why I love about the Holy Spirit brings life. It's fresh. It's new every morning. It's not the same water that was there yesterday. That water's down the row. Way. 
There's a new, there's new water. It's fresh water. It's ready, it's refreshing. It hasn't been warmed by the sun. It's right fresh. That's Holy Spirit. That's why you can wake up every morning and have these new mercies, have a new joy. Joy comes in the morning. Holy Spirit. Refreshing. Alive. The Holy Spirit is not like your old hair, hair gel. A little dab will do you. What was that called? Burl cream. Burl cream. I was going to say burl cream, but then, like, well, most of you would get that, right? Anybody heard that commercial? Oh, yeah. Mandy, you're too young. <laughs> you haven't heard that? Burl cream. A little dab will do you. And that's kind of how we do it the Holy Spirit. We go, man, I got Holy Spirit when I gave my life to Jesus. That's all I need. No, it's not. Come on. We need Holy Spirit. We need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. When you're poured out, you best be filled back up again. And we're, we're not running on empty. We're not running on a quarter of a tank. We're running on the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I got a uh, place uh, where George and Joe live. There's a spring there that comes out of there. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Hundreds of gallons a minute. That's refreshing. That's not in short supply. That's in vast supply. I have a spring that does two or three gallons. But this one's doing 200, 100, and wow. whatever. I mean, just boom, boom. Every minute, every day, doesn't slow down. Constantly. That's the Holy Spirit. So when we're going through difficult times... Holy Spirit, right? So there's two things, three things. There is a receiving of the Holy Spirit. There is a baptizing with the Holy Spirit. And there's an infilling with the Holy Spirit. So when we look at verse number uh, uh, 2 Peter, I'm going to go to verse number 20 because I'm kind of been muddling here a little bit. For if after, now this it's talking about those people who are speaking in your life, and they're, they're mist. They're really not rivers of living water. They're mist. They are water. For if, for if after they have escaped the defilement, I'm going to change that word you. Okay. If you have escaped the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are again entangled in them sin and are overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would be better for you not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn away from the holy commandments delivered to you. Verse 22. It has happened to them according to true Proverbs. A dog returns to its own vomit. A sow, after washing, returns to its wallowing. It doesn't sound like it's getting any better when you turn away from the Lord. You just go back to the same thing. Because those who are teaching you are teaching you to keep you in bondage. It's the Spirit that's trying to keep you in bondage. Jesus wants you free. I, Jesus said, I have been sent, right, to set the captive free. We walk in freedom. If you're still caught in bondage, you better examine what you're believing. We're free. Now, there's things that entangle us, but I'm saying, don't be entangled by them, because guess what? <laughs> Blood of Jesus has broke every yoke, every bondage. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just for today we thank you for the word of god that's alive and living and lord i thank you i just speak the word of god over life over this congregation over those who are hearing us today lord god that there'd be freedom in christ jesus that they be that they would break away from the things of the lord uh, things of the of the world and lord i thank you that it's by your spirit it's by your word it's by the blood of jesus it's by the father that we have authority to take over these entities that are holding us in bondage. But the shackles have been taken off. All we have to do is walk away. So I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would continue to strengthen us.
when difficult times come. Lord, I come against those deceiving spirits, Lord, that we have allowed to teach us, that we have allowed to entertain. We stop that in the name of Jesus. We pray for those that are being caught up in that, that are being deceived in the fact that what they're teaching is contrary to the Word of God. And Lord, we pray for them in the name of Jesus, that they would be come into a place of truth, they would come into a place of life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.